Hey everyone, I haven't posted a video in three weeks, coming on four weeks now. I apologize for that. I took a bit of a break during Christmas and New Year's, um, so that was around two weeks. And then I had history class, which was kind of insane. There's a lot of construction like all the way around, so it's kind of loud outside, but I should be back now. And uh, my history class is kind of busy, so hopefully it like calms down a little bit, but today, we're gonna be talking about this camera right over here. This is, this here is the Canon SX740HS. And what I'm gonna be doing is going through every single mode on this camera. Just like a little quick walkthrough, talk about what each mode does, just to get you going a little bit with this camera as requested by one of my viewers, which was MS Catman. I'll put this like screenshot of the comment right over here so that you can take a look at it. I'll be going through each individual mode on this camera and hopefully it'll help you out to get to know this camera a bit better and start shooting some really cool stuff with it because it's an awesome camera. I love it. For this tiny little size, it is such an amazing camera. I really recommend it. Anyways, let's get into it. Let's start off in automatic mode. You get there by simply switching this dial right here at the top to where it says auto. Once you're there, this is just gonna act just like your iPhone camera or any any other camera. Um, you're just gonna point it at something and just press the shutter button and the camera will record the picture for you automatically. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to just any settings. It will figure out what you're doing. Like if you're shooting a sunset or whatever, it's gonna figure that out for you, set all the settings up for you, and just simply take the picture. All you gotta do is point and shoot. It's that easy. You can also use automatic mode to shoot video. There's like a little video red button over here, right next to the shutter button. You just gotta press it and it's gonna start taking video, so I can do this. Hey everyone, taking video with the Canon SX740HS on auto mode. Um, you can use this flip screen also if you'd like to be able to see what you are vlogging, which is actually one of the big advantages to this camera. If you're in automatic mode, even though this camera advertises that it shoots in 4K video, you won't be able to shoot 4K video in automatic mode. You're gonna have to move to video mode to be able to shoot full quality video, but we'll get onto video mode later on. All right, next mode, just above automatic mode. It looks just like this. It has like an A on a camera and then like a little video film roll. This mode is just like automatic mode, but it's called movie digest mode. What it does is when you wanna go take a picture, so let's say this, I take my picture, click the shutter button, and you will have a picture of your whatever you took a picture of but then if you press the middle set button and go onto that movie digest icon just like you saw on the mode earlier and you press play what it does is when you want to go take a picture so let's say this it does like a bit of a live photo type of thing so just like on your iPhone or Android device they have like an option where you have a little video built in to your picture this does the exact same thing where you take a picture and it records a little bit of video before you took the picture just so that you get to like relive the moment a little bit this mode is gonna take up a little bit more storage on your SD card so you have to be mindful of that when you are taking video digest photos but they're excellent for capturing the moment especially when you're on vacation and you want to take one camera not like a separate video camera and a photo camera this is really good for that just for capturing the moment all right now we're gonna move on to food mode which is underneath the auto mode it looks like a fork and a knife what this mode does is it basically enhances the colors of food when you're taking picture of food so um I don't really have a picture of food here with me, but um, actually I'll be right back. All right, so I've got a pear right over here, as you can see. 
it's actually like a fake plastic pair but it's gonna work for this test. We're gonna put the camera onto food mode and we're gonna take a picture of this pear. All right, looks pretty good. And now we're gonna go onto regular auto mode and take the exact same picture. Now, when you look at the two pictures on this device here, you will see that this one is the one that was taken in food mode. The colors on the pear are much more vivid than the ones in this picture. It just brings out the warmth and the colors of the food more versus when you are just taking the picture in basically any other mode. It basically just does the editing for you instead of you having to do it yourself after the fact. Now, another really cool thing with uh, food mode is when you press the, uh, the middle set button, the Q. If you go right over here to this area, there you will see you can control the color tone of the image so by rotating this dial over here you can make the image cooler or warmer based based on your liking so if you have some food that looks better cool with like cooler colors versus warmer colors you can adjust that there alrighty now we are going to move actually I don't need this anymore now we are going to move on to Actually, I don't know what this mode is called, I'm just gonna be honest, but I like to call it portrait mode because it really helps with portraits. It's very similar to automatic mode. Um, I don't have someone here to help me test this out, so I'll just do it as if there was an invisible model that we're taking a picture of right now. What we can do is basically frame up our subject, so let's say there's like a model over there somewhere. We've got them in frame. Now what we can do is we can press info right down here and we can adjust the brightness of the image. And when we go down, we can adjust how smooth the subject's skin is, which is why I call this portrait mode because it you would probably be using it for portraits. So with this mode, you're basically gonna have automatic skin smoothing for portraits, which is why I like to call it portrait mode and you can also control the brightness next is sports mode it has like a picture of a person like this like running um, this mode is probably best demonstrated just like by listening when we want to go take a picture of something if you hold down the shutter button it takes a bunch of pictures really fast now you could kind of guess why this would be really good for sports if there's someone running or whatever you want to get the perfect shot of them where like they look like they're running like the best shot of that person or a person shooting like a soccer ball or something like that you can get the perfect shot of that without missing it basically because the picture is taking like photos rapidly next is scene mode the icon is SCN and with this mode you simply have more control over your shooting mode so you have a bunch of like effects here so if you're shooting portraits it's gonna do that if you do smooth skin, it makes the skin look better in your, the pictures. This does grainy black and white, soft focus, fisheye effect, art bold effect. Basically, you have a little description of all the kinds of stuff that you have here. You get to basically have a little bit more control, but it's still auto mode. All right, just moving on from here, we can move it to the video mode. And this is video mode. If you press this button over here, it starts shooting video and it's going to be 4K video, which is pretty cool. You can control the resolution of the video by pressing Q and then scrolling over here through these modes and you can change like the types of autofocus and all that kind of stuff there too. But here you will have control over the resolution of video that you will be taking. In this mode, it's the only mode that can shoot 4K video, at least as of right now on this camera. So if you're like, for example, in scene mode, you're not gonna be able to shoot 4K video. It's only gonna be 1080p. All right, moving all the way up on the dial to the, the mode that just has the letter P on it. This is called program mode. This is just like automatic mode, except you have a little bit more control over your functions. So if you press Q on your camera, you will notice that there is much more control over all of your things. So here you have your autofocus. It, it basically, everything has 
a description of what it does here. So if you want one shot autofocus, it focuses just before you take a picture every single time. However, servo autofocus right here is good for tracking subjects for stuff that are moving. So if someone's running, you'll be able to track them more easily because it's gonna be tracking as they're running down the track or whatever. You get to choose if you wanna do high speed shooting, continuous shots, if you want a self timer, metering mode this is basically how it's going to set the exposure for the image so how light or dark the image is going to be how it's going to automatically judge that this it has a little description of what each mode is best for i would just leave it on the first one it works best for most situations and it always works best for me here's the image quality you can choose how high you want it to shoot the quality here's the video resolution because we're not in video mode there is no 4k here though you get to set the iso this is actually getting into manual camera modes and i have a full tutorial basically i teach you everything about manual modes in my book which i will leave the link down here in the description uh so you can get my book and learn about those modes but i'll do a little like rough explanation right now but um that gets into full detail full explanation it's for dslr photography but the manual mode will still work for this camera like everything that i say there will work for this as well except a few key things like you won't be able to switch the lens on this camera and that kind of stuff but um for iso it's basically the sensor's sensitivity to light so it's going to be the how bright or dark the image gets. However, the higher you set it, the higher the amount of grain, the higher the dots will be in your image. Alrighty, I came back and I'm nice and toasty. Got myself some gloves. Today is one of the colder days that we've had in a while, so. Whew, I don't know if you could see the fog, like the steam. Anyways, we are going to continue on with the mode that says TV on the camera. No, you're not going to be watching television, unfortunately, on this camera. That would be really cool, but that's not the case. This camera mode, sorry, it's, it's kind of loud. There's like people, but this camera mode basically gives you control over the shutter speed. This is how fast the camera is going to take a picture. So the faster the camera takes a picture, the darker the picture is going to be. But also remember the slower the picture is, the more shaky the image might get. You control this simply by pressing this button over here. It's like a little plus and minus button. You can switch between how bright or dark you want the camera to set the aperture to, which we will talk about later. Um, I would just keep it right at the center. If you are on ISO auto, then that will also control the ISO. And if you press that again, and this little tiny circle is down here on the camera, you're gonna have control over the shutter speed. So you can see as I spin it, it gets darker and lighter on the camera. Alrighty, next up is AV mode. This is aperture mode. It's gonna be basically the exact same as TV mode, except aperture and shutter speed, like they swap. So, um, you're not going to have control over your shutter speed, but you will have control over aperture. Aperture is basically how wide open a camera lens is. So the wider open it is, the more light gets into the camera, but the more closed it is, well, the less light gets in. And also remember, the wider open it is, the more blurry the background is. So as you can see, like if I zoom in over here, behind the camera right now, the, the background is very blurry. Um, as you can see, but if I change the aperture, I'm going to just do it on this camera as a test. You could see it's much less blurry now. This is F20. This is F3.5. So you can see like the difference between how blurry the background is. And you can do the same exact thing here um, by twisting the style. And then if you press the little plus and minus, it switches here with this, which controls the ISO and the shutter speed automatically. So again, pressing the plus and minus, it switches between the aperture and the 
metering, which is how bright it's going to end up being by automatically adjusting the two other components. Now, manual mode is similar. It has the little M at the top. This is the last mode. It gives you full control over absolutely everything in the camera. So what that means is you're going to have control over your shutter speed. You can press the little plus and minus. You'll have control over the aperture. You can press the plus and minus again, and you will have control over the metering. So this is going to set only the ISO if it's set to auto. Um, but if you take that off of auto and put it onto your own, you will have full control over that too. So every single function which is on the camera, you will have full entire control if you are on manual. Now I hope this video helped out at least some of you. If you still have some questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Either I or someone else can try to help you out and I will try to bring more content out to all of you. Have a lot of fun with this camera. It's an amazing camera and yeah, I have fun with it and you guys, hopefully you will have a lot of fun with it too. I'll see you guys next time.